because you do have to continually be upgrading your mind to be able to handle the humanness of business. Robert Radnotti. Hey, Robert Radnotti. Robert Radnotti. It's not the corporation, it's the leadership that has mm -hmm. a constraint. That was kind of the start of me changing my whole life. We're up to 38% success rate in curing cancer. Harvard and Yale medical schools are involved and we've got 200 scientific papers coming out this year. It's possible to get smarter about the way you train. So once I got qualified to hypnotize people, mm -hmm. six brave kids um, allowed me to hypnotize them the night before I meet at, at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Okay. And we used to teach, that when you first start out, you teach, it's called the arm raising technique. And you put their arm down here and you just start talking to their arm and to them saying, you know, in just a moment, your arm's gonna start raising. There's nothing you can do about it. It's gonna be like filled with helium and it starts raising. And it's like the freakiest thing. It takes mm. like five to 15 minutes for it to come up here. As soon as it hits about here, you hit them in the nose, I mean in the forehead, and you go deep sleep and they just go out. Mm. Okay. Six kids did that. Next, next day, three of, all six of them set huge PRs Wow. Three school records. Personal records for, yeah, yeah, yeah. for people who don't know. That. Yeah, for people that don't know. And then the next Monday, my athletic director called me in and he said, I heard what you did. He's mm -hmm. never said anything good. I'm sitting there going, yeah, so cool. You know, and he goes, you know, you can't do that. And I said, what? You can't hypnotize? No, he said, we're a Christian university. You were playing God. Don't ever do that again. Oh, Interesting, yeah. Pepperdine yeah. is. A, and it's a real Christian university. Yes, it's not for like sure. a fake one. Yeah. Yeah. Anya graduated with an MBA in financial strategy there. Oh, okay. That's our love language is finance. Yeah, yeah. Since then, she's got a, um, a master's uh, in science from Claremont and a PhD in artificial intelligence machine learning. Ah, I was just so. with a, a professor of artificial intelligence in Sicily, hmm. but he teaches in Colombia. Wow. So, you're, you hypnot so did you just stop hypnotizing after you saw what it could do? Well, or did you just keep going? I, it turned out when I did my internship, mm -hmm. it was right when COVID hit. Right. And I was hoping one day to be good enough um, as a hypnotherapist to be able to use Skype, because Zoom, I never heard of that. Right. Um, because some of the professors had, um, you know, 20 to 30% of their clients were by Skype. And I wanted to live in three or four places in the world. So right. I was hoping I would get good enough. But literally my internship started right when COVID hit. Okay. And previous to that, um, the school, it's the only accredited school in the world. And, and it. so it's an 18 month program. It's not like a Mickey Mouse thing. And, you know, Joe Dispenza graduated from there. Marissa Pierce, a lot of the famous hypnotherapists. Graduated but, uh, from where? Um, it's called HMI. HMI. Yeah, Hypnosis Meditation Institute. It's Interesting. it's right off the 101 freeway. Everyone sees the sign, but no one ever knows what it is. Is this in L.A.? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. In Tarzana? Yeah. You familiar with Marshall Silver? Uh-huh. Yeah, he lives here in town. Yeah, yeah. Also, he lives in uh, Carlsbad, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So normally, the internships, we had everyone would have an office, and you get one or two clients, maybe three, um, a few times a week, and that's how your internship was. Well, mm -hmm. COVID hit right when... I started. So I just posted on Facebook, I'm looking for some practice clients. And within an hour, I had 56 people sign up. It was right after track season. I had a long time before cross country. So I took them all on. So I had like six to eight clients every day, seven days a week. Oh, wow. And I just took them all. And, you know, I'd start two or three in Europe, two or three in North America, two or three in Asia. And I just went all day long. And you do that, and you get really good. Wow. And, but I was working with people with real issues. Hmm. And it was so much fun. And I actually got pretty good at it. In fact, I hypnotized a dog in Australia to stop barking. Hmm. That's, my, that's my claim to fame. How do, you, how do you communicate with the dog? Well, so I was working with uh, the woman. Um, her name is Simone. And uh, she had cancer. Okay. And we were working on pain management because we're actually in California not allowed to work on medical issues. It's like the only state where you can't. The AMA passed a law to prevent that. But um, like third or fourth session, she had this little dog running around before I'm getting I said, Simone, I can't hypnotize you with that dog running around. She goes, well, Daniel is her husband. He's out for a bike ride. And when he's gone, Princeton, dog's name, he barks all the time. And I said, wow. well, can't do it. Grab the dog. I'll hypnotize him. She said, you can do that. And I said, sure. I had no clue. 
While she's chasing the dog, I'm Googling how do you um, hypnotize a dog. And it turns out the world's foremost cat and dog hypnotherapist is one of the professors at my school. So I called up the article. It had a script. I put it on my screen just because this was on Zoom, just as she gets the dog on her chest. So I do my hypnosis thing, just like, I don't know, I'm just doing it. Mm -hmm. The dog goes out, she goes out, I go through the script. The next day she posts this picture, video, on Facebook. She's sitting on her couch, Princeton's like in her lap, and she's going, Saturday morning's my worst morning of the week. Because Daniel, my husband, he goes out for a three hour bike ride and Princeton barks for three hours straight waiting for Daniel to come back. But last night, Robert Radnote hypnotized Princeton to stop barking. You can see it works because he's nice and calm here. Wow. Now what I think happened was that she went out and I think her nervousness probably had something to do with it. I got her to calm down through hypnosis, probably by her calming down the dog Wow. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I just knows? did the script that was on it. Just it just worked. It just worked. Yeah. Wow. So you talk regular to the dog? No, it's in us. She, she actually died. The lady. Oh, yeah. Um, you, you, when you say regular, talk regular it, during that session, yeah. You said you hypnotized the yeah, dog. Yeah, yeah. I just. I did just, you talk to the dog? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, the, yeah. so somehow it, it understood English well enough to be hypnotized. Or, you know, they teach you to change your voice. You know, be, okay. You become more fatherly and you have a lower voice and it's mm. slow and calming and peaceful and you know mm. yeah. wow okay that's yeah. interesting yeah so I, I could see that especially you know dogs res are they since they don't understand our language but they would understand our tone and our yeah. demeanor yeah and if we're calm then yeah. they'll probably be calm yeah. and then relaxed yeah um, yeah, like if you uh, just just relax, a lot of dogs will leave you alone. Yeah. People get scared, and yeah. and of course the dog's going to be like, "Why are you scared? Are you going to do something to me?" Right, right. And they just fight back. Yeah, you know, yeah. which is pretty crazy. And that's how Caesar Milan, you know, the dog whisperer. He, you know, you watch that show, and, and he that's what he does. He just kind of is calm and. Wow. Yeah. What do you think when you hypnotize those six? Um, athletes, mm -hmm. right? When they were running and they all PR'd. Yep. Um, what did you do when you, like literally you hypnotized them? Mm -hmm. what, what did you do after you hypnotized them? Okay, what? so hypnosis, all that means mm -hmm. is you've slowed their brain waves down, okay. down to the theta brain wave state. Okay. And hypnosis only means that you're in a state where you're the most open to suggestions. Okay. Okay. Typically, when we're working with a client, we suggest things based on the interview that we had before them. So they tell you what they want in hypnosis. You're taking notes, and you try to use the exact words. Right. But in this case, you know, I know what people want, what I want for them. So they were just phrases like, at the end of the race, mm -hmm. you're going to feel nice and calm and confident. Your stride's going to be really nice. As you come around that final turner, so a lot of visualization, mm -hmm. you're going to be right on the shoulder of you know, whoever we are competing against. And you're going to go wide on him. And you're just going to go right by him confidently. And you're going to stride all the way into the finish line. And when you cross that finish line, your arms are going to go wide. Your chest is going to cross and break the tape. And you're going to look at the clock. And you're going to go, man, I just set a PR. Hmm. Confident all the way, nice and relaxed. So all the kinds of, of, of coaching cues you'd all already use, mm -hmm. you just put that into their subconscious during hypnosis. Hmm. Through visualization and words. You know, it's interesting. I, I do Ironmans. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the disciplines is running. Sure. Uh, it's a, a marathon, 26.2 miles. Mm -hmm. That's after you bike 112. Mm -hmm and you swim 2.4 miles. Right. So the run is the last part. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've, I've hired swim coaches, um, did a lot of biking. I haven't hired a bike coach, but I had wondered about, like, running, mm -hmm. right? Because um, I just, to me, it's, it's all about setting your heart. Like, I set my, my heart, my range about 150. Okay. Um, going uphill, I'll hit about 162 mm -hmm. heartbeat. Um, and I, I change my thinking about when I run uphill, because I run a lot of hills mm -hmm. on purpose. I take routes that mm -hmm. uh, about four miles is uphill mm -hmm. that I take before I run the rest of the, the miles. Mm -hmm. so that I, and I do that first. Yep. And I, when I started thinking about, you know, it's, 
it's not a hill, it's just different muscles, mm -hmm. right? Because when I'm running downhill, my, the front of my muscles are really active, and then when I'm running uphill, my, my glutes and my, my butt is what's, mm -hmm. you know, um, pushing most of the, it's a little slower, mm -hmm. but ultimately, and it was weird, when I changed my mindset about running uphill, my running uphill completely changed. Mm -hmm. Because rather than dreading going uphill, yeah. I just started thinking, I'm just working different muscles. Mm -hmm. Different muscles than when I run downhill and different muscles than when I run flat. Mm -hmm. And I noticed a significant difference, not only in how far I could go, but also how I approach hills. I don't worry about hills anymore mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. Have, have you heard that before? Like, I've been running for, it's been a decade. This is my my 10th year mm -hmm. in doing Ironmans, mm -hmm. and I just started this process maybe about six months ago. Okay, so a couple things. First of all, mindset is hugely important in every kind of sport, and in running in particular, but there's still a piece that, that you could, if you want to advance more, because there's a lot of science around running, mm. okay? So there's different energy systems, and as a coach, we train at different energy systems so and this is one of the new ones that came from um, USA track and field spend a lot of money now because we are trying to catch the the uh, African countries <laughs> good luck with um, that. in the Olympics. and but we, we are wow. we are doing it really and it's because you know we we looked at what do we have to catch up with 200 years of genetics and the answer was technology and so we started pouring money into technology. And what we found was amazing things. For example, in stride length, when you're running, mm -hmm. you know, your, your, your stride is, you know, whatever amount it is. Mm -hmm. But it turns out when we videotape the elite Americans and the elite Africans, the stride length, the time in the air was exactly the same. But... The time spent on the ground, it's called ground contact time, mm -hmm. differed by 0 0.02 seconds per step, which is quicker than a, a um, blinking your eye. Mm. But if you look over a 10K distance, if you could just half that distance, I mean the, the time from 0 0.02 to 0 0.01, an elite American at that time was running about 28 minutes, they would run 26, 12, and break the world record. So then we went about trying to figure out how do we do that? And it turns out that if you stood on your one leg, you, you kind of wobble, There's, and we call it a quiver. Mm -hmm. and it turns out the African runners didn't. And when we were doing the videotaping, and when people were hitting the ground, there's this quiver that goes on. And it turns out that's almost equivalent to exactly 0 0.02 seconds per step. So what we started doing is, how do we do that? How do we get rid of the quiver? And the answer was, stand on one leg for as long as you can. And then add in some um, resistance. Like, I take the kids, I used to take the kids at Pepperdine Malibu down to the ocean, and we just do one-legged exercises while the waves are coming in. Because it used to be I'd just tap them. And just that creates stability in all those muscles and tendons around the, the, the knee and you get more stable, and it's, it's like the craziest thing. So one of the things I used to tell everyone is ask them, do you brush your teeth? Most people say yes, twice a day. I said, okay, from now on, when you're brushing your teeth in the morning, brush your teeth standing on your left leg, and at nighttime, brush your teeth standing on the right leg. It creates just enough stability, instability that strengthens your knee. If you want to improve your running, that's what I would do first. Wow. It's a huge, huge thing. Wow. Another thing, just as an example, is especially distance runners, um, we don't think about speed, right? We just go out and run. Like you're running, you're running hills, yeah, that's a great thing. I don't think, yeah. Here's one of the things we found through our research too. Everyone, including marathon runners, ought to do speed work two or three times a week. And when we say speed work, what we're talking about is 30 or 40 meters not hundreds, not two hundreds, not quarters, but 30 or 40 meters with three to four sec or minutes of rest in between each one. It's really hard to do for a distance runner. We don't want to do that. We want to get going. But yeah, we feel like we're not accomplishing anything. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it turns out this is a really important thing to do. 
including for marathon runners, because of the energy system that's that's attributed to it. I and just so, had something that happened, um, and maybe this leans into it. I was um, gonna miss a plane, and I was running, and I was I was running all out. Mm -hmm. When I got up to the plane, I felt like my lungs had doubled, mm -hmm. and I was breathing like like a, like just a horse, like mm -hmm. a horse, yeah, and, yeah. and and I went, wow, I feel amazing. Mm -hmm. Like I felt absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. I hadn't sprinted like that. Yeah, and all of a sudden, I told uh, I told Anya, my wife, I'm like this is really weird. Like it really opened up my whole lung capacity and really opened up everything. Mm -hmm. Does that? Probably not. That, uh, that, Why I do think, you think that I'm, happened? I'm guessing that that was a chemical thing that, you know, when, when we do something or we accomplish something that, you know, you really, you uh, release dopamines and other good feeling chemicals. It felt chemicals. like my, it felt like my whole lungs and everything just yeah, opened yeah, up. Yeah. So that's what happens. You know, that's that's what we teach in neuroscience. Mm. In in my Joe Dispenza teaching is we teach that you know your whole body, your whole brain, it's just science. It's neuroscience, and if you understand it, you could take advantage of all sorts of things that we just don't even know about. Because you've got a computer in here, and you've got all these electrical things going on, chemical things going on. If you start to understand them a little bit, mm -hmm. you can do all sorts of amazing things in life because you have better strategies. Have you seen that? You know, it's wild. I hadn't heard, you know, I've known about Joe Dispenza since 2001, I believe it was. Okay. Maybe 2000. Is, With the, the film, What the Bleep? Yeah, when he, yeah. he came up on my radar yeah. and um, started studying a lot of his work. And then, it's funny, just lately, he's become popular enough where people are calling him a madman. <laughs> yeah. And crazy. Uh -huh. And uh, that his claims are, like, not true and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, you, you know, you've made it like, cause he's really gotten, cause Tony Robbins went through a lot of that too. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, what do you call it? Uh, Est went through a lot yeah, of that. Yeah. Um, he got kicked out of the country by yeah. Scientology. Right. Scientology sued Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. They went after Marshall Silver as well, at least, you know, and you look at like anybody who's been in the personal development, like I've been studying personal development since for about 26 years, mm -hmm. maybe actually longer than that. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, to me, you become as successful as you become evolved as a human being. Sure. Right? Yeah. Like you're the constraint. Mm -hmm. uh, and even when I'm, you know, consulting in large corporations or working in corporations, it's not the corporation, it's the leadership that mm -hmm. has a constraint. There's a right. bottleneck. And usually the bottleneck is, you know, the neck of the CEO or yep. the president or yep. the one that's really running. Sometimes yep. the CEOs and the presidents are literally not running the companies. They're mm -hmm. just figureheads. Mm -hmm. But there's a constraint there. It might yep. be the COO, the chief uh, operating officer. Something is the constraint. Mm -hmm. And um, it, to me, expanding your thoughts, your mind and looking at different viewpoints, uh, you can open up and that constraint will you know, and then what's weird is once the constraint is gone, you'll never even know that it was there. Mm -hmm. Like when you try and recall mm -hmm. that constraint, you won't be able to. Yeah. It's like when your finger stop, stops hurting. I, yeah. I dislocated these two fingers uh -huh. on a bike crash a couple weeks, uh, about six weeks ago. And they hurt really bad. I have to like fight to get them to move every single day. Yeah. Um, so, but it's weird. Once they heal, I'll probably forget that they were even dislocated. Sure. You know, just like I've forgotten... The last time I talked to my cross country coach, um, I, I was running three times a day. Mm -hmm. And I, had, uh, I went and said, look, I've got to take some time off from, from running. I went to the doctor and the doctor said, you want me to break this toe? And I said, why would I want you to break my toe? Like, do you need to break my toe? Like, why, why would you say that? And he goes, you have nine broken toes. This is the only toe that's not broken. <laughs> and I don't want it to feel left out. I said, well, don't break it. <laughs> He, I said, well, both my feet are in pain. How do I fix that? He goes, there's nothing you can do. You're going to have to walk it off. There were stress fractures mm -hmm. from running too much. Yeah. I ran morning. And I was just, I was going to be yeah. cross country, the best cross country 
uh, a personality, you yep. know, just, and I ran morning, I ran at lunchtime, I ran at night, and even the coaches were like, we think you're overworking out. Mm -hmm. We actually think you're doing too much. I didn't listen to them. Mm -hmm. And as a result, um, once we got to the meet and I was actually trained up to, to really win, um, I couldn't do it because mm -hmm. I, the pain was too, too bad. Yep. Yeah, it was insane. Yeah. So now I take care of myself when I train. Mm -hmm. I listen to my body. And uh, I, I like feeling good. Mm -hmm. Like my Ironmans take me about 14 hours. Okay. So during that, I really think, okay, how do I make sure that my mindset is right, mm -hmm. my body is right, and my uh, nutrition is right, mm -hmm. so that I can enjoy mm -hmm. the whole process, yeah. you know, because I, I think that's important. When you talk about um, the different aspects of training, mm -hmm. you were talking about training in different areas. Yeah. One was the speed, sp speed workout. Yeah. One was the, uh, you know, standing on one foot yeah. kind of deal to, <laughs> yeah. to do that. Um, what other? Well, there's lactic acid workouts. Okay, so when you're trying to create a lot of lactic acid in your system, mm -hmm. and then you recover from that. One is just kind of skeletal. It's just running How long distance. does it take to recover from lactic acid? Uh, three to four minutes. Three to four minutes? Enough in a training session. In okay. a training session. After the training session, 48, or yeah, 48 hours. Yeah, before you want to do another one of those kind of workouts. Yeah, yeah, because lactic acid. I so all during the Ironman, I avoid lactic acid, mm -hmm. completely avoid it. So mm -hmm. I make sure I don't push anything mm -hmm. into a zone that would create lactic acid. Okay, you probably still do. Oh, and probably. so it, by doing workouts like that, mm -hmm. you you can ensure even better that you're not going to get into that situation in, in the triathlon. Wow. Okay. That's why, you know, there's like four different kinds of training that if you're doing scientifically, mm -hmm. which may be the next step for you, that you just look at. You got to get a running coach and they could put together and instead of just going out and running and doing a hill work, you know, the way you described, because that's what I used to do too. That's yeah. how we trained. It's just now easy. Now there's a lot of science around it. Hmm. And, and just like a lot of the things that you teach, there's just a lot of science, there, like neuroscience and everything is, is you're just, it's, it's possible to get smarter about the way you train. Wow. So you don't have to go run three times a day. I did that too. Yeah. I did that I run too. every day, seven days a week yeah. and, yeah. and just plug away at it and it becomes just, I'm, my body's so conditioned yeah. to just go and yeah. go bike a hundred miles and, and go and swim I do a that too. Miles. If you want to get faster. I'm just saying, if you want to get faster, if you want to go from 14 hours to 13 hours, right. get smarter about your training. Yeah. But if you just want to do it for enjoyment, then just do what you're doing. Yeah. That's a tough, that's a tough one. Yeah, because you're probably a competitive guy. I, I, you know, Iron Man's the first time that I've accepted that I'm not going to ever be first. Okay. Right? I'm 53 years old, mm -hmm. right? Um, There's age groups. There are, and you know, but as far as being first, in an, in an Ironman yeah. and the, the amount of discipline and what it really takes to be. So that was, Ironman was one of the first things for me, a lesson in being a competitor that completes and does well mm -hmm. as opposed to winning. Because yeah. most of my life, if I couldn't win the game, I didn't play. Yeah. You know, it was like, yeah. if I can't beat you, I'm not going to play. Yeah. You know, um, so Ironman really conditioned me to be a great sport. Mm -hmm to enjoy the process, to mm -hmm. enjoy the other athletes, to enjoy the discipline, mm -hmm. um, to enjoy the workouts. It, it's very, very different. I know that sounds kind of weird. No, yeah, it not to like, me. Enjoy an Ironman. Like, <laughs> hey, you know, when I got there, it's, it's like how many people get to do that? Yeah. And then, you know, just go out and have a good time. Just enjoy the day. Yeah. You know, enjoy the people, the volunteers, mm -hmm. the, the sport itself, mm -hmm. and just enjoy. Well, that's probably true about all life. Yeah. You know, a lot of, you know, sport lessons apply to life. And that's a, a really good one, too. If you just enjoy life, mm -hmm. life enjoys you. So Joe Dispenza, um, why, why do you think people are starting to attack him now? I don't know. I haven't heard that because actually what we're doing now, um, we're doing a lot of research. Because mm -hmm. most of his stuff is like literally brain mapping yes. and, and actually uh, testing and showing results. It, it, yes, but we've got now, um, it had been just UCSD involved. Now both Harvard and Yale medical schools are involved. And we've got 200 scientific papers coming out this year. 
wow. showing real results, real healings. So when you said that, I'm, I'm surprised because actually we're going so far in that direction that there's more belief coming out he's rather been, than... He's been that way for 24 years, though. Like when, he was brain map, like he was the first one I ever heard brain mapping and actually. But we didn't do the research part of it. Now there's research coming out and it's scientifically tested. Wow. And and so you can't dispute these things now. We're up to 38 percent success rate in curing cancer. Once we hit 50 percent, there's four children's hospitals in Los Angeles that are going to allow us to come in and start working with kids. The healing part of what we're doing is amazing. And we've got the research now, and incredible universities are coming in to write peer-reviewed um, scientific papers that are going into the major publications. So it's actually becoming real science. Can he actually state that, 38% yes. success yes. rate? Yes. You can actually state that. Yes, that's what I'm telling you. So, and Harvard is behind that study? Harvard Medical School, Yale Medical School, and UCSD. USCSD has been involved for about this five plus totally years. This goes totally against I know. the establishment. I know. How do you get the establishment to study Joe Dispenza's work? This is a chiropractor. He's no longer a chiropractor. What is he now? Well, he's a researcher. He's a lecturer. He's always been a researcher. He's all those kinds of things. But now he's got credible universities involved that are proving they must be turning over. Can you imagine they being are. an MD and you're, you're listening to a chiropractor that's and, tell, telling you that this stuff works? And in every, <laughs> every big workshop, you know, there's now you know, a couple thousand people. The come egos to workshop. that have crashed and you know, burned. You ask how many, how many doctors in the room, and there's always a handful, and you go up and ask them, like, is he telling the truth or not? And they just sit there and go, like, it's blowing me away. He's telling the truth. Wow. It's all science, it's real science. So that's why when you said that he's considered a man, I go, it's going the other direction from my world. I because there's that. real science. I was surprised, him. right? Yeah. Like, like I've always liked his work. Um, you know, Tony's gotten a lot of, you know, people that I think anytime you like literally want to help people, they like just stab you right in the heart. Yeah. Like the, the more you try and help, the more, I guess, because hurt people hurt people, yeah. right? Yeah. And the people that are at, saying they want help, are hurt and then they just want to hurt you. It's, sometimes it's the strangest yeah. thing. Yeah, sometimes uh, it's it's mind-boggling. Like I I've, I've been I went to uh, Tony's Platinum mm -hmm. and I had gotten so Tony was one of my my first mentors that failed me when I was a kid. Tony Robbins. Mm. I bought all his tapes, all mm -hmm. that because I learned all the mindset stuff, but there were no tactics or strategies or like, how do you form a company? How do you form an LLC? How do you patent? How do you, how do you trademark? How do you get exclusive rights? Mm -hmm. How do you get product lines? You know, how do you set up, get licensing, uh, get your sales permit? How do you set up? What are the different sectors? What's a distributor, wholesaler, manufacturer, um, retail? Like what are, what are all those sectors? So I understand business mm -hmm. completely. And so I had bought everything. Right? Like Nightingale, I bought everybody's stuff yeah, yeah. on personal development. Yep. You name it, I've been through it. Okay, gotcha. Zig Ziglar, the whole bit. And um, I was about 15 years old, I had gone through this stuff. I was a complete nerd when it came to this stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, just really hungry. My dad cut me off financially at 12. Okay. And at 15, E. Joseph Kosman comes on. And I watch him. I had saved up everything at that point, and I bought his course. And he changed my life. Um, he taught me how to set up businesses, mm -hmm. taught me how strategies. I got exclusive rights to three different products. And by 17, I had 200 employees and I was a multimillionaire. That's awesome. So, you know, and it, Tony's great at mindset, you know, and all that stuff. But the business side of it, the real nuts and bolts and strategy, tactical, actionable stuff just was missing. Well, here's what he says. This is what I hear from Tony. Tony. Is and I love Tony, by the way. Whatever, so, and I was know, a I, I, too. I love Tony. I've done yep. all his workshops. Yep. I recommend that everybody do them. There's yep. so much to get interpersonally. Yep. Um, you know, but there are different mentors. 
There are. He's an emotional mindset mentor in my mind. But what he says is whatever you want to do in life, whether it's to open up a business or relationship or buy a house, whatever, mm -hmm. you go find who's done it really, really well. And model them. And model them. Yeah. And you know, whatever you can afford, spend as much money as you can afford on whoever's the best there. So if it's opening a business, go find out who did that. Yeah. Sounds like you found that. And that's who you study. Yeah, that I, I heard that like when I was 15 from uh -huh. from him. I think he was like just a kid. Yeah, he was just just a kid, like yeah. maybe 19, 20 years old. Yeah, uh, coming out of uh, from Jim Rome. Yeah. And uh, the other thing I thought of was because I wanted to do what Tony was doing. Mm. I, that was like what I wanted yeah. to do as a kid. And then I start to look and I go, what has he done? And at that point, he hadn't done anything but speak mm -hmm. and make yeah. make development tapes. Right. And uh, I was like, man, I want to go get some life experience mm -hmm. before I ever step out and lead. Yeah. So going back to Tony after, you know, 40 years or 38 years mm -hmm. and doing all of his stuff, mm -hmm. he would completely changed. Oh, yeah. He evolved. Yeah. Um, and instead of talking at people, right, mm -hmm. or, or he started talking with people. Mm -hmm. And his whole, he completely changed his approach mm -hmm. and made it more about transformation yes. with people yeah. rather than teaching a bunch of slick things to say mm -hmm. and acronyms and all that stuff that was early on, uh -huh. uh, like Kanai and just all oh, his yeah, stuff yeah. that he was coming up with. And yeah. then it became more, and then when he did I'm Not Your Guru, mm -hmm. that, that was beautiful. That was my very first event. Oh, really? And I'm in the movie three times. Really? And when I went, I didn't even know who Tony Robbins was, except that he was in the, one of my favorite movies, um, Shallow, <laughs> Shallow Hal, Hal yeah. where he hypnotized <laughs> Jack Black in the elevator. Right, right. That's all I knew of him. And my, my at that time, wife's cousin, who was a 22-year-old platinum partner, invited me to come. It was between cross-country and track season. So mm. I said, sure. And I went. Wow. And I sat, you know, we were platinum partners, so we sat like sixth row. And, you know, he comes on, all these people go wild and crazy. And I was a, an introvert at that time. And one of the most powerful things he said to me, said to the audience, was, you know, most of you don't know too many people here. Why don't you try on a different persona? And it, somehow it resonated. I said, okay, I'm going to be an extrovert here for this six-day period. Right. And it completely changed my life. And by the afternoon, I was one of those yelling and screaming guys. I signed up for a coach. I signed up for Platinum Partners. And uh, um, that, was, that was kind of the start of, of me changing my whole life. Wow. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, you know, to me, and this was something that came out of Est. And Life Spring mm -hmm. in uh, 1991. Uh -huh. um, it, it you know we talked about because I had, did leadership advanced. Mm -hmm. um, I did masters and then I staffed and and helped understand how they put the courses together. Yeah, and I was like, man, you get as much as you put in. Mm -hmm. So if you put a thousand percent in, you're going to get a thousand percent out. Mm -hmm. So many people go to these workshops, go to these events like Joe Dispenza or Tony, yeah. in doubt. In, yeah. If you're sitting there, and I talk about it in my book, if, you, I don't, if people want to evaluate my book, I say, don't buy it. It's not a book to evaluate. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an evolutionary book mm -hmm. about transformation, mm -hmm. right? And it's your transformation. Yeah. So if you go to Tony Robbins and you evaluate what he's doing, you miss the whole point. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care about your evaluation of him. Right. It's not going to change the 15,000 people that are going to show up. Right. Right. Or the fact that he lives in Florida and California, or, you know, and travels the world. It doesn't change his life that you're criticizing him. Yep. You have no power over the guy. Yep. So and then you miss out on everything that's there because you're so busy judging mm -hmm. that you miss like what's there. Yeah. And I would say that's 95 percent of people. They miss because they're so busy judging, even the getting up and dancing every 15 minutes mm -hmm. like a lot of people have a, it's a long time <laughs> before they let go yeah. of the, the, uh, the idea that they think that's stupid. Right. Right. But yet getting up and moving every 15 minutes is so good for you. Yeah. Good for your mind. Yeah. Good for like it just, I don't know why, but I went there and I had so much fun. I did, I did too. everything. I and did too. I didn't, I didn't, I go, this is like the coolest thing. I'm usually in charge of everyone having fun. This is, 
someone in charge of me having fun and I'm learning. Uh, I was a sponge. I took all the yeah, notes. I, did too. I was into it. I actually, my date with Do Destiny posters over there. Did you do date with Destiny? Yeah, that was, that was, I'm not your guru. I have eight of them lined Johnny, up in my office. Grab, can you grab underneath the, the Hawaii poster? What I loved about date with Destiny, this was, this is my favorite part about date with Destiny because each one of these represent a couple of days of actually you know, deep analysis that you could easily forget. Mm -hmm. The fact that at the, end of, at the end of the event, you put this together and put together what cognitions, what realizations came to you, right? Um, it's amazing. Even yeah. my goals, I think I've hit every single one of them. Yeah. Did I, obviously, Iron Man, yeah. several of them now, a ton yeah. of them, it was actually a goal there. Yeah. Um, got to the point where I had plenty of money to buy a jet mm -hmm. and then uh, for tax purposes, it makes no sense for me to get a jet. Um, you know, business consultant did that mm -hmm. several times. Mm -hmm. And the transformational workshops, uh, working on a community to help do that. That's been probably mo my most daunting because mm -hmm. it's the most dangerous yeah. um, because it's filled with all kinds of drama and litigation and all yeah. kinds of stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah the, I, I mean, I, I almost have this in the exact same colors. Um, oh, really? I, yeah, it's, it's so cool. So my mission changed from, it was very corporately, because I used, uh, my first career was a, as a chemical engineer for Exxon, and mm. we taught, you know, how to make these mission statements, like the foremost energy producer, environmentally safe, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And so mine, for the first five years, because I went eight years in a row to this thing, I think it's perfect in December, you know, it lines you up for the next year. My fifth year, it finally hit me yeah. that my purpose in life is to love contagiously. Mm. And that has hit, and that has driven my life since then. Wow. It's really cool. But I, I, I love the values, um, the statements, both the going towards and the away from relationship vision. I think super powerful. Um, I love this process. So when I, I was I at Pepperdine too. and I started having... And it's you. It's your, it's exactly. it's your blueprint. It's, exactly. not, it's not what Tony decided your blueprint should be. Yeah. You know, he gives you the context. Yeah. But you provide your personal content. Yeah. And I think that's that's the real value is he pulls the content out of you that puts your life you know in context. And then you have like what are the values I'm going towards? Yep. What are the values that I want to stay away from that yep. have been basically pulling me down? What are the things that really are my power virtues? You uh -huh. know, what what are those things? Um, and then, you know, what's your mission? Yep. Like so many people miss that. Yep. Um, it, and yet it's so simple. Yeah. I've seen people do this on their computer and everything. I like yeah. the fact that I hand wrote it. Minor that way. Yeah. I, I kind of like, so my wife I, has one too. When I was at Pepperdine. It's so cute to see like someone you love, oh, yeah. you know, just kind of their, yeah. their content, yeah. you know, out there. When I was at Pepperdine, I started doing um, summer camps for high schools. Mm -hmm. And I took this model and we said, our camp is called Run to Destiny. So by mm. the end of the week, every kid, you know, these are, are high school kids, had a poster like this. And their uh -huh. parents would come pick them up and they sit there and go, my son has a mission in life? Yeah, wow. Uh -huh. My son has a primary question? They got power virtues, they got values, they got a running vision. Wow. And they, uh, parents were blown mm. away by wow. what we did in that week. And, and it's was, their kid that did it's it. It's their kid, <laughs> and they thought, you know. This is better them, than any textbook. A lot anything. of them, they yeah. threw their kids into, they were coming to summer camps to get rid of them. Yeah. And they come back with a mission statement for their life. Wow. It was the coolest thing. Yeah. Even the, did you do the process like they do with a date with Destiny? Yeah, I do. Yeah. For sure I do. Yeah, Yelling you, and screaming at you, each other. Yeah, you got to have pushback. Like, what, does it really matter to you? And the, the idea that people, you know, clarify that, mm -hmm. um, you know, to the point where you know when you're, when somebody says something, it, it's not going to push you backwards. It's like so clear. Yeah, and, and see, you know, Tony's process is yelling and screaming at each other, right? And I didn't really like that. But then when I became a hypnotherapist, mm -hmm. I just hypnotize people with their, whatever they got here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because hypnosis is just putting you in a state where you're open to suggestions. And so we put it in their subconscious through hypnosis, and it's super powerful. You don't have to yell and scream it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, I, I definitely, I got to frame this. 
starting to get damaged. You know? <laughs> um, this is in pretty good shape. What year did you do it? Uh, this is 2018, I believe. So 2018? I think it was. I was there. 2018, yeah. I was there. Yeah, I, I probably saw you. I was I, on I, Team 10. What? <laughs> I don't know. That would be One of the years I was on Team 10. It probably wasn't 18 because I would remember <laughs> you. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, that was it. That was interesting. I my I just left my my building got flooded out uh, and farmers denied my claim. I spent seven years suing farmers, but oh. they told me when I was at that event that um, they were not going to cover the claim. And then they ignored doing any research. Hmm. Their thing is farmers is pretty simple. They basically go, you know, they deny claim. And then they put blinders on so they don't investigate it and they hope you don't sue. Wow. If you do sue, the legal fees are probably about $100,000 for farmers. The, the payout, we had, we had two mock trials, was $75 million. So if I win, if the, tr if the jury understands the case, mm -hmm. I make $75 million. If the jury gets confused and the, the uh, insurance company is able to confuse the jury and, and they don't understand it, then I'll lose. Right. And uh, it's so funny. The, at the end of the trial, I had seven attorneys. We went over seven years to, in wow. the fight and very expensive. Got to the end. Most people would never fight farmers. Right. And I'm thinking all of us, including the judge, including the other counsel, are like, there's no way we're going to win. Like, there's no way. But two jurors didn't like me and didn't understand the case and their personal like whatever they're human beings mm -hmm. they just gave it to the defense and we're like wow. we're like you cost me millions of dollars and wow. uh like the case was did they investigate we clearly proved it was in their own notes that they did not investigate the water pressure in the street mm -hmm. that pressurized all the fixtures mm -hmm. and flooded the building they said it was a sewer backup the water couldn't have come from the sewer mm -hmm. the water came from the street how does like how how does how does 6,000 gallons of water come out of the toilet mm -hmm. without water coming from somewhere? Right. Right? So at any rate, the water touched the toilet. They used the exclusion, $5,000 for, for sewer backup, and then they wow. ignored the street. Wow. They ignored everything all the way to the top. It went all the way up the chain of command, and they ignored the whole thing. Hmm. And we showed that to the jury, and the jury goes, well, it's sewer backup. Nobody argued that it was sewer backup. We, we, nobody was arguing that. The case was, did they investigate it? We proved that they did not investigate it. They admitted on the stand they did not investigate it. And the jury gave it to the defense. Mm -hmm. It was the crazy, I like, I'm looking at it going, oh my God, could you imagine being on trial for murder? <laughs> well, it happens, right? And, and people going to jail and you look at the jury and go, how did they make this decision? Yeah. Like, uh, like I saw, I've, have you ever seen a jury, have you been to a jury trial? No. It is creepy scary to see our system at work. Mm -hmm. How we take people that are supposed to be neutral, mm -hmm. that are oblivious to the situation, mm -hmm. cram something down their throat for three days when they don't want to be there, yeah. and then expect a good decision from it. But it's still the best system in the world, I think. I think. What, what do we replace it with? Well, then you have just judges making decisions, and yeah. you know, you know, that's what they do in some countries. And you look at those and go, like, how do they make that decision? Yeah, it is. To it me, is. it's still the best system. Yeah, I, I think there's, there's got to be some tweaks that could be made, but it is what it is, mm -hmm. and we're stuck with what we got. So mm -hmm. there's no change in it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and you'll talk to attorneys, they'll say, you'll lose cases you should win, and you'll win cases you should lose. Right. And I, once I sat there, I'm like, you know, in, as an entrepreneur, you're in lots of lawsuits if you own a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. I've started 32 of them yeah. in 17 completely different industries. Things go wrong. Yeah. And, you know, employees make mistakes, customers attack you because they're upset, yeah. and, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that yeah. happen. Um, you've been an entrepreneur for years, right? Mm -hmm. Have you been sued? I, not for a business, we had a neighbor sue us because their kid fell down in my playground. Oh, wow. That was the craziest thing ever. 
because um, they were really good friends of ours, the kids were friends, and I'm sitting there, what are you doing suing us? And they said, we're not suing you, we're suing the insurance company. They're gonna give us millions of dollars. I said, it's, you're suing me. They didn't see that at all. Wow. And it was so crazy, because we didn't do anything wrong. But um, our insurance agent, I, I, I can't remember who it was, in the end, they looked at the little girl, and she had little glasses, she was a little homely little girl. There was nothing wrong with her. They told her, still have her come to your house. They, they were at our house all the time. We fed them, we took care of them. She goes, yeah, my dad took me to another doctor tried to find something wrong with me. We gave them all the information. And in the end, the, the insurance company said, in looking at the jury, they said, if they look at that little girl, they're gonna think something's wrong with her, so we're going to settle. And they gave her a Harvard education. This was when she was like eight years old. They paid for Harvard education, a, 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 a yearly sum of money, I don't know, like $100,000 a year, all this stuff. It ended up being like you know several million dollars worth of stuff. And there was nothing wrong with her. And she would come to our house all the time and say, yeah, my dad's trying to find someone else to say there's something wrong with me. Oh, my God. But they settled. That insurance company didn't fight it. They settled. How old was the little girl? About eight. And she just fell off a merry-go-round or something? We had, a, you know, I, I built one of these fort kind of uh, things, and somehow she fell down, and, you know, everyone freaked out. There's nothing wrong with her. There was nothing wrong with her. Oh my God. But you know, he had a history. He sued his company, she, the mom sued someone. You know, this is how they lived, by suing different people. Oh and God. so they look at this as a bonanza. Their girl got hurt. They yeah. tried to find a doctor. She said, I think she went to 20 doctors before she found someone and said, oh yeah, there's something wrong with you. Or could be something wrong with you. Oh God, wow. Oh. Yeah, they didn't want to chance it. Because the, the pen, punitive, like my, my case, punitive was $75 million. Yeah. My damages were a few million, but the punitive were so much higher. Yeah. Um, and then we said they, don't, they didn't dispute 800,000 of it that you know, definitely was damaged. Yeah. And the insurance company is, see, the fact that they can screw me out of you know, $800,000 or a mm -hmm. million dollars, mm -hmm. How, gives them the ability to pay out on a claim like that. Yeah. Because they looked at me and go, the jury's not going to like him. Yeah. He's successful. He has That's real exactly estate. That's exactly what they did. They looked at the little girl and said, she's so homely looking yeah. that they're going to have a, a heart for her. Yeah. Whatever she says, that's going to be the truth. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. It's something. We still need to make a, a video on that whole case. We have it all recorded. Mm -hmm. um, we still got to do that, but it's such a it's such an emotional seven years, yeah. Um, seven years of that, and the it was just it was emotional for me. Sure, it was a, it was an ugly ugly thing. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of those scars I think that build up over time. How how do you think? Um, how does an entrepreneur, a, a seasoned one like me, after 32 years of being screwed over by so many people? Um, and ripped off and abused. How how do you how do you resolve all that? Do you think? Well, I think it has a lot to do with your mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, particularly for you, and taking you as an example, you've gone to all these kinds of trainings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have strategies, you have processes, you've trained your brain to be able to do that. More is is what about the person that's never done anything like that? How do they overcome it? I don't know the answer to that because oftentimes they don't yeah. and that becomes a real issue and that's why there's so many failed businesses out there so to me you know the the personal development industry is super important for entrepreneurs because you do have to continually be upgrading your mind yeah. to be able to handle the humanness of business the humanness of life because we do make mistakes. You make mistakes. We make mistakes. Right. And how do you overcome that? You've got to train yourself. You know, one of the things I saw just recently, they were, um, they were comparing, I think, elite, the top five basketball players versus six through 20. Okay. And what they studied, what they found was, and I don't know how they did this, but the research showed that those top five somehow 
mm-hmm. were able to reset their 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 body chemistry faster after a missed shot than six through twenty were able to. Mm. Isn't that interesting? It it resonates heavy with me. Yeah, you have the, to learn how to forget. Yeah. So the first the first big failure in my life took almost two years to recover from it. Yeah. Right? Um, Because I had lost 15 million, went $875,000 in debt. This is about 2020, 2002. Yeah. And then I surpassed 43 million in like from 2003 to 2008, I just blew up. Mm -hmm. Started 14 companies. Mm -hmm. I was running them at the same time, developing, building like a couple hundred homes, Mm -hmm. nightclubs, restaurants, tearing down neighborhoods, building industrial property, um, banquet facility, events, um, uh, finance company, uh, insurance company, dealerships, you know, construction company, real estate brokerage, just going, Mm -hmm. right? Full, Full on, full blast. And then the real estate market blew up and I had like all these projects. We had like, I don't know, 50 projects going or something like that. And all the, my bank, my main bank failed. And I was like literally watched uh, September 05 go from a huge net worth, like, you know, nine figure and up Mm -hmm. type, type uh, net worth. And then all of a sudden I'm, worth negative 12.8 million because of all those projects mm-hmm. going sideways and yeah. not being able to be finished because they're half built yeah. or 85% built. And the time it took me was about a couple hours. So from two years, the first time, sitting in depression, mm-hmm. sitting and all that stuff, the next time it, it was like a couple hours, I'm like, okay. And then I just went back to work. Mm-hmm. I, went, I went to work for four years mm-hmm. with a negative net worth of $12.8 million, paid everybody back, called all the banks, worked out all my projects, finished them, got things taken care of, took care of all my responsibilities, and was debt-free April 12, 2012. Mm-hmm. So, it, you know, it, the, I guess for me, when you fail, the key is how long you sit in that. Mm-hmm. And just like the resetting of the, the athletes, my, my failure reset button now is minutes. Okay, so that, that- It's like, so what, now what? That period mm-hmm. is called refractory period. So anytime, whether it's a big thing like a business failure or a little thing, you're just triggered. Right. Okay, so this is where neuroscience comes in. There are chemicals that are produced in your limbic brain mm-hmm. that cause that depression, that sadness, that upsetness, that anger. Mm-hmm. Do you know how long those chemicals stay in your brain 15 minutes between 90 seconds and 120 seconds but every time you think about it you produce that chemical again, again. so that's what happens in your your time period where you were two years so that's you thought weird. about it over and over yeah the last science i read which was probably about 10 15 years ago was and they must have got it wrong was that if you if your thymus creates the chemical cocktail, mm-hmm. releases the mm-hmm. neopeptides, yep. it hits your body, yep. the cell literally, it, it's 15 minutes before that goes away. Okay. So, so I guess that's the changed. The latest research is 90 to 120 seconds. But if you think if about you it again. If you reinforce the thought, then the thymus makes it again and exactly. sends the peptide. Exactly. So a peptide only, um, the peptide communication to the cells only lasts 90 seconds. It dissipates. Yeah. 90 seconds. 90 seconds. So th- that would mean that our thymus is communicating to our cells consistently and only communicates for about 90 seconds. Wow. That particular. Because I know people that ha- think that are angry all the mm-hmm. time. They might have stronger skeletal muscles, Mm -hmm. but they also tend to have heart attacks because their muscles are getting those peptides over and over and over again. Exactly. Anger that and flexing and 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 just yeah yeah. You see people that are just rigid and you're like this is what we teach in in our neural change solutions program. Wow. We teach the neuroscience. Actually, there's there's a section on anger. And it's specifically on the neuropeptides going down to your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands coming back and say, give me some more 
anger statements. I know. I've got it in my book, how people become addicted. Yes, exactly. It becomes an addiction. Exactly. And you're like, where in my, what in my environment can I be angry about? Exactly. It's, it's like, for example, you know, getting gaslighted. Mm -hmm. People are actually looking to get gaslit, mm -hmm. right? Where somebody tells them something different than reality. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't match up to reality and you know it, yep. which then pisses you off mm -hmm. if you have any sense of integrity about how you see the world. Yep. When someone tells you, you know, the, the earth is flat, like you're being gaslit, yep. right? There's enough evidence that the earth is round. Um, so, you know, literally when you're, you're being gaslit and you know it. Mm -hmm. And if you have a sense of integrity, somebody mm -hmm. said the world is flat. You know, it's like they just enjoy gaslighting yeah. you, you know, and the whole they're flat. There's tons of flat earth people, yeah. you know, it's all in your subconscious. We don't know what's going on in our subconscious. Mm -hmm. So by the time you're in your mid 30s, 95 percent of all your thoughts, your habits, your feelings are programmed in your body. That's why change is so difficult. Mm. And, a, and a huge part of that is becoming conscious of your unconscious. You know, that's, that's what we teach is become aware of what your thoughts are. You know, when I'm speaking to you, you're speaking to yourself four times faster than I can talk to you. Mm -hmm. And when I stop, yeah. you speed up to six times as fast. So it's so important what you're telling yourself because if you're telling yourself some things that don't serve you, you're yeah. producing that chemical over and over again. And then you become thirsty. You're addicted to anger, depression, sadness, whatever those things are. And so if you can do that for those kinds of things, so negative things, it says that you can, it, it probably indicates that you could do it for positive things. That's our healing model. Hmm. That's wow. how we're showing things. If you can talk yourself into positive statements, I feel great, I'm amazing, you know, positive affirmations associated with the feeling of it, not just the word. It has yeah. to, it's not, can't be just the affirmation. It has to be the feeling associated with it. Yes, you some, can change your DNA. You yeah, can change your genetics. I totally agree. One of the things I, I think too is not everybody resonates with the same verbal command. Some people, if they don't believe it, it it'll be counterproductive mm -hmm. to what they're actually saying. Yep. So you have to find your own internal dialogue mm -hmm. that's going to create the emotional result that you're looking for. Right. Um, it's funny, I talk about, I actually literally talk about in, the, in, your, in my book about how you can go to different states. Mm -hmm. um, I learned it from acting, Okay. right? Yeah. I'm in the Screen Actors Guild, I was in a bunch of movies, uh -huh. I did theater, went to a ton of acting classes, mm -hmm. right? I did it for personal development, how to grow. Yeah. And I was like, how do I get into a scene? And I found that I could either throw my body into the body language of that particular emotion or I could switch up and think thoughts mm -hmm. that would trigger it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Or I could just be in the emotion. Mm -hmm. And what's, what's fascinating is if I'm being in the emotion, a lot of times the thoughts will get triggered and then I'll go down that thought mm -hmm. uh, neurosynapse yeah. uh, wiring. Right. And all those thoughts will be there and intensifies whatever emotion I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Just by jumping into the emotion, mm -hmm. the neurosynapses come. And yeah. I think a lot of people are not consciously aware that they'll, they'll feel an emotion, believe it's real, and then start to go down the neurosynapses of that particular emotion. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you're dealing with somebody who's like all pissed off and you don't know why. Right. You just, they right. just tapped into that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So what we, what, we, what we teach is that, you know, these nerve cells, when you have a thought, they come together and they mm -hmm. fuse. And that if you think that thought over and over again, you start creating those neurosynapses. But you can prune it. If it's a, if it's a thought that doesn't serve you, then you prune that so mm -hmm. that you no longer believe that. You stop it or change it. And those are important processes to learn right. if you want to actually make change. Yeah, neurosynapses that fire together typically stay together. Wire together. Yeah, and th that wiring can be unwired. Um, mm -hmm. The thing is, most people don't realize that um, that wiring is very comfortable. When they get grooved in, when you, when you have neurosynapses that are mm -hmm. used to firing together and have all the associated thoughts that mm -hmm. feel good, yep. it's comfortable because we 
experience the world, our reality is made up of those neurosynapse training, yep. right? So if that's the reflection of your reality, you have to disagree to the point where the, that, that reality could be different. Yes. And start to go down the road to, to prune those, exactly. that reality. Exactly. Um, and it, it's fascinating. Like if you saw a um, rabbit on the front of it, it looked like a rabbit. It's, you know, everything about it looked like a rabbit. Mm -hmm. But then you go to the side and you notice that the rabbit is cut in half and it's really a robot, mm -hmm. right? Your reality shifts. Yep. Right? And I think reality is really not fluid. People want it to be fixed to have an answer, but there is no real answer. Mm -hmm. You know, Einstein said that, like yeah. literally there isn't anything really that's consistent. Yeah. Well, the mind doesn't know whether it's real or imagined. True. Yeah. You know, so you can imagine things, you know, you know, through sport, we use visualization all the time. Right. And, and you train yourself to believe that you're a great triathlete mm -hmm. or that you run up that hill and it's not a big deal any longer to you. Right. Right. Because you're, you're training yourself, you're changing your muscular structure. And that's what you're doing. You're, you're, you're essentially hypnotizing yourself. Yeah. Because hypnosis is just putting you in a state where you're open to suggestions. Yeah. The suggestions that you have learned, whether conscious or not, is how to become a high performance person, human. Yeah. Whether in business or in sport, or in relationship or whatever, you've trained yourself that way. So coming back to your question earlier about how do you do that for people that have failed, mm -hmm. to me, a, a huge part of that is, is have a regular personal development process. Whatever that is. Whether whatever it's reading. That is. Whatever that is. For me, a lot of it's training. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel great training. I feel yeah. great after. I feel great during. Yeah. yeah. I get the endorphin rushes. Yep. My body feels great. The circulation yeah. is going. Yeah. Um, I got diagnosed with type two diabetes, which is why I started training. Okay. And uh, I signed up for an Ironman, a half Ironman. Mm -hmm. uh, within three weeks, I mm -hmm. was doing a half Ironman, mm -hmm. um, and then trained up to do the fulls, and then mm -hmm. started doing fulls. But um, yeah, I was that first first Ironman was was so painful. Yeah. Because I had only trained for three weeks. <laughs> And I had different training. I had yeah. uh, lifting training, uh -huh. no, no endurance right. uh, training. So when you let's talk about that love concept, mm -hmm. um, you you say that intoxicating love in love contagious contagious. Yeah. How how do, what does that look like? Well, that's an interesting question because it's morphed recently. Okay. Um, I thought loving contagiously, I have these love buttons, I don't have one right now, but I usually give out love buttons. And I've given out like 15,000, they're magnetic buttons, I'm just trying to be loving to everyone. Okay. I recently went to a Tantra workshop in Bali in May, mm -hmm. where I learned something different. And we did this exercise, and it was called receiving love. Mm -hmm. And what the facilitator said, Sarita said, was that most people are, are, are in this state where you've, you probably learned that self-love is kind of it. Because we go through times when we don't have love, where we're seeking love, maybe we're getting love, giving love. Then some point in our lives, for a lot of people, we go, oh, the key thing is we got to get self-love. So we love on ourselves. Whether it's taking ourselves um, physically, taking care of ourselves, whatever. And then we don't find fulfillment there. And what she said is the key is to learn to receive love. But it's not receive love from another human being. It's receive love from God or the universe or source or whatever you believe in spiritually. And we did this exercise. It was so powerful, pulling it in. A lot of it was visualization. And what she said was, as you learn to receive love mm -hmm. from God, universe, source, you actually ascend and you become love if it's a regular practice for you. And it's become a regular practice for me. And my life has changed so much just in the last two months. Magic happens every day. And it always kind of has, but it's accelerating. And it's because now I believe that loving contagiously is actually becoming love. And that energy now is contagious around people that I get around. And uh, I actually have this model that I'm working on for a, a book that is going to be called Loving Contagiously. And it's another new workshop that I'm teaching on how to actually become love. 
And but, I've but, wanted to connect to God or the universe source for all my life. You know, I go to church every once in a while and you know, people are standing here and they're going, ah, they feel something. I go, gosh, I, I try that. I don't feel anything. This, in May, that was the first time I actually felt something. What did you do? Hmm? What did you do? What I do? I did this exercise, pulling in love. It was 15, 20 minutes. You're sitting across from a partner who was this beautiful goddess, and she's doing the same thing. And we're doing it, and then, and then we close our, we open our eyes, and we're doing it again for another 15, 20 minutes, mirroring each other. And then she comes closer, and you kind of are connected, and then you're just rocking back and forth, and you're visualizing, receiving love from God, and, and, and seeing the beauty of the ocean next to you, and the grass, and the trees, and everything that, that is part of the universe. Hmm. And for the first time in my life, I actually felt that connection, and it's changed me. Hmm. It was super powerful. What changed? Um, my vibrational level. Okay. I'm, I'm, my energy, my vibration now, I think, is just so high. And I'm in the Abraham Hicks world, too, and law of attraction and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm attracting more and more. I think that just my inner being, I don't know if you're familiar with Abraham Hicks, but what they teach is to... You, you think, you, you honestly think... <laughs> Is it, did you really yeah, you say that? You got everything. You got everything. So, I, okay, I've been studying personal development since I was a kid. Which which camera? Middle camera or the cameras for each one of us? That one went too high, or did we not have a, a battery in it? How long have we gone? We we. we yeah, that's about a good podcast. I didn't even realize for a while that we were podcasting. I thought we were just talking. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's better that way. Yeah. It's better that way. It's, 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 more, it's easier for people to listen to a conversation than, you know. Mm -hmm. And also, hopefully, you know, the, the questions I'm, I'm asking are questions that, that people would have. Mm -hmm. And I, I think also from, a, like from the skeptic viewpoint... Because anybody who is, the only reason I threw in the, the stuff about Joe Dispenza in a negative way, so that if people have some sort of negative condensation about him, they can still be open to listening to us. Sure. Um, and then, so I throw a little bit of negativity to, so people will stick around. Mm -hmm. If they do have, uh, like, people that hate Trump. Yeah. You know, uh, you, you've got to throw in a little bit of, like, upset towards Trump, a mm -hmm. little upset towards... Mm -hmm. Camilla, I mm -hmm. always say that I hate them both. Yeah. Like, they're politicians. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. Um, they don't run the country anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'll throw stuff that in there because I, I just can't have an opinion about politics right. because it's not, it's not I, I have no interest in, uh, politics to me has become so bad mm -hmm. that anybody who gets into politics is an idiot, in my opinion. It I voted so for Tony ugly. Robbins for president the last two times. Tony Robbins? Yeah. Was he on the ballot? No, I write it in. Oh, you write it in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. You, there is an option. There right? is an option. I, I exercised oh that the last two times. Oh, my God. That's and I'll probably do is it, it again. Is it working? Yeah, we're good. Okay, we're good. Where were we? Um, uh, we were talking love. about the love. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that you had asked, um, you know, what do I feel? Yeah, what do you feel? I feel this, this incredible sense of peace. I feel... I, it, it's almost like there's a communication there. Hmm. I'm knowing what to do. I'm knowing what to see. And things are happening in my life now that I go like, how in the world did that happen? Example, I bought this lot in Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. I want to build my dream house. It's on a cliff overlooking the ocean. I just went there and I felt so great. About a year ago, my daughter wanted me to move there. It was on her birthday. I found this thing. Turns out, that someone has been trying to permit a house on this final lot in Santa Barbara for 66 years and no one's been able to. Somehow I bought it and said, I'm going to be able to do it. I have a different strategy than the previous owners. You know, there's lawsuits, all sorts of people hate each other, blah, 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 blah. So a week ago, um, one of the neighbors sends me a, an email. I hadn't met him yet. He lives in Mexico, but he's got a house there. He goes, and he's turns out he's the main guy that has been fighting the previous owner for 38 years. He sends me a note saying, um, "I got an idea. 
um, I want to buy your lot from you for one dollar, and for that, I'll sell you my house for a cheaper amount. I go, I want to build my house here. And he go, the next day he sends me a note saying, well, I want to meet with you. I don't know who you are. I want to meet with you. So I met with him. We connected like this. He wanted to hate me. He wanted to hate me. But somehow, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just love right now. Mm-hmm. And we bonded to the point where now three days later, this happened in a, a, like a four or five day period. Mm-hmm. He's a, a, a former architect. He said, uh, here's the deal now. And we went through some iterations. I'm going to design you your house. In fact, I'm going to design you two houses. And I'm going to build them in Mexico for $30,000. And we're going to truck it up here. And we're going to put it together in one to four days. And for that, I'm going to help you with the permit that I've been blocking for 38 years. And I just want to live in the top one for four weeks out of the year. And the whole neighborhood found out about this guy's deal and what we've done. And they go, everyone's going to lay down and support it. I don't know if this is really right, but this happened in the last week. And I truly believe it's because I'm loving contagiously everyone in mm. that neighborhood. Wow. I can't necessarily describe it yeah. because it's this feeling, it's this energy, it's this aura that, that seems to be just accelerating for me right now. And I attribute it to that Tantra exercise where I learned to receive love from God. So now you're doing it as a practice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're we're away from coaches. Mm -hmm. We're away from the Mm -hmm. goddess that was on the other side of you. Yeah. Now you're just you. Mm -hmm. How do you practice it on a daily? What are are your tactics? Oh, it's so cool because I'm glad you asked. Literally, when I go out, I look at the world and go, I'm receiving love from the mountain out here, from the desert, from that cactus. Mm -hmm. And two nights ago, I had this dream. It's in my dreams now. I had this dream, and there was this beautiful, giant um, tree with the most emerald green colored leaves and I was noticing all of them I've never seen this colored green before it was in my dream and I remember saying thank you God universe source I'm receiving your love in the dream yeah I don't know how this is happening well, it, it's it's weird you, you you think about it and I'm I was looking at a tree in Oregon it was um, tree must be I don't know two, three, five hundred years old, Mm -hmm. huge tree, Mm -hmm. lots of wisdom, Mm -hmm. right? And, you know, it's it's amazing. The the earth, plants, animals, they're all communicating with us. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's so much going on. I see it when I'm running. Yeah. Um, Just the animals and the birds flying and the, the trees and all that kind of stuff. And they're always communicating with us. And yet, like... Most people just have no, even every single, I have a ton of plants around the house, Mm -hmm. right? And some of them, I've failed them with this 115 degree weather and I feel so bad. Um, But yet, you know, I I take care of them. I change the, you know, some of the, make sure that everything, they get what they need. And I care about them. Yeah. I I care about all the plants. So you're loving on them. Now what I'm suggesting is feel the love from them. Oh yeah, I do. Because, I I, but it's an active process of yeah. receiving love. I mean, this is just my experience. Probably everyone's experience is different. I believe this has changed my life because I took that stuff for granted. And I come from my background as a, a chemical engineer. I was a chemical engineer for Exxon for 25 years. Yeah. And now I'm in this woo woo world. Yeah. And going like, like magic happens all the time. I'm meeting the star seeds and all this weird stuff and going, the more I learn, the more I know, I don't know. Yeah, there's a, a lot of stuff. There's an interesting, I remember reading a research um, paper on, there was, you know, if you cut a plant, it could be um, a mile down the road. Uh-huh. And the other plants all ex- like feel that. Mm-hmm. And there's that interconnectedness mm-hmm. that they uh, experience. And they put electric probes mm-hmm. in the plant, like down the road, yep. and then cut the plant. Yeah. And it received uh, you know, a resistance yeah. from that energy flow yeah. uh, that they were able to track. And then another uh, study that I, I read was one where they were doing cells, and they would 
blow smoke on it that would kill the cell. Mm -hmm. um, and then after, you know, cells had, like, it had gone through that, you could blow smoke that would not kill them, and they would just die. Mm -hmm. Literally from getting smoke on them, yep. they would just die. Yep. Uh, and that one really tripped me out. Like, See, those are the kind of research that in the Joe Dispenza world they show us all the time. Yeah, this stuff is just wild. There's a lot of that research going on. When you were talking, it reminded me in the movie I've Avatar. A, I got a meter upstairs that reads thoughts. There you go. And what's, cra what's really wild about this, the first time I, I'd experienced the meter, literally, the th the, when someone would have a thought, the actual thought would read. But when it actually came to their conscious mind was seconds later, two, three seconds later. Mm. So you, the thoughts were coming in, mm -hmm. but they, weren't, they didn't hit the conscious mind and, and really be received until yeah. seconds later. I already knew they had the thought, mm -hmm. right? And then so I knew what to ask about because I could see what thoughts had more emotional upset on them than yeah. not. And so they would have the whole conversation. But at first... I was listening to him, and I'd go right at the word, and yet it's ha it happens before they actually say it, mm -hmm. that the real emotional charge is, yeah. um, that, that trigger. And it, I was like, what does that mean? That, like, literally, you have the thought before you have the thought. Like, it's there, right? Yeah, it could mean a lot of different things, because there are people that talk about, you know, we're in different dimensions at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, that, the multi-dimension yeah, aspect of know, it. Things are happening in I, every direction all the time. Yeah, I, I hear yeah, all in these the, in things. In the quantum, in the quantum, like it, when you study quantum physics, yeah. like they break all the rules. Uh, yeah. But there's actually research and evidence to show that those rules that are being broken are true. Yeah. And you're like, why? Why would a particle change based on whether we observe it or are going to observe it in the future? Yeah. Like, let me get this straight. So that particle knows whether we're going to see it in the future or not. And it'll behave differently whether we see it or... And then, you know, Einstein talking about the observer, how it changes the experiment, how, like, that alone changes it yep. from who observes it. Yeah. And you're like, how can we trust any research? It's so crazy. And that's why, you know, we, we, earlier you talked about just the concept of doubt. Yes. I think the more you learn... The, the doubt, at least for me, it kind of goes away going like, this is weird stuff, but it could be. Yeah, if you can suspend doubt long enough, yeah. you'd be shocked exactly. at the experience you could have. Exactly. If you could just suspend doubt. Exactly. You know? And I think that's what happened to me. I had doubt that I could have a communication or receive love from God, and all of a sudden I felt it. Yeah. That doubt disappeared, and now more magic happens in my life. Uh, what's it's fascinating, I pray every day. I miss a couple of days every once in a while when I forget. But I'm really always have been, had a really solid connection with God. Uh -huh. um, I talk about it in, in my book. I don't believe in God. Mm -hmm. I know God. Okay. Right? Like, yeah. I'm connected. Uh -huh. um, I don't have to believe. I can experience it. Mm -hmm. Right? And it's, it's fascinating because we all have that. It's just whether you block it or not. You've been blocking it all these years. I grew up with atheist parents. Yeah. So I didn't have a choice. So you were taught to block it. I was it. taught. You were, you, you were taught to actually reject. Yeah. And my parents, um, they were in Hungary. Um, they escaped from Hungary. But, you know, there was so much atrocities. You know, my mom was Christian. My dad was Jewish. You know, the Nazis and Russians did really bad things to people. Yeah. To their right. families. They didn't yeah. believe in God. Like, how could there be a God if all this bad stuff happened? Yeah. So that's how I was raised. Yeah. And I go, I want to I want to feel something. Yeah. And it's, it's been a many year process in May. I'm telling you, I felt something for the first time in my life. You broke and it was that. pretty cool. And uh, yeah, like, it's it's fascinating because I remember, you know, being eight, uh, 19 or something like that and telling my mom that I don't believe in God or Jesus or any of that stuff. And I only went to church because you made me. Mm -hmm. And she threw me out of the house. She goes, get out of the house. I wasn't living there, but yeah. I was just visiting her. And yeah. she said, get out. I, yeah. don't, I didn't raise a non-Christian boy. Yeah. You know, I was an altar boy the whole bit. Uh -huh. And uh, it was like two years later that I walked into a church and was born again. Uh -huh. And uh, it had, I chose it. It was such a different feeling. Mm -hmm. 
when I chose that connection sure. rather than having it imposed. Sure. And it was totally different, mm -hmm. just completely different when, when I received mm -hmm. God into my heart, when yeah. I received yeah. and went, wow, this is, this is so different. Yeah. And, uh, and then I got baptized in the River Jordan mm -hmm. went and did, went everywhere Jesus went, mm -hmm. uh, walked his whole thing, went to where um, Mohammed, you mm -hmm. know, came across mm -hmm. and uh, read the Quran, mm -hmm. sat with like every single religion. I've gone in and um, communicated and, you know, accepted and loved them. Like mm -hmm. I'm like everything. Like people ask me, I'm like, I, don't, I'm, I love people. Right. You know, people have different beliefs yep. and that's okay with me. Yeah. Right. So, and they're like, no, you got to believe something. I said, well, I, I'm, I like to get educated. So I read everything. I've got a Torah. I've got a Quran. I've got uh, I went to Kabbalah, mm -hmm. went through all their courses in Kabbalah, mm -hmm. um, read all the stuff Scientology had, and I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, this is, this is not what people are making it out to be. Mm -hmm. And I've just like studied everything. Um, went to the different, you know, if you study self-development, you mm -hmm. look at everything. Yeah. You just do. Yeah. You know, it's uh, not e pop. Even Abraham Hicks. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Which a lot of people, if they listen to that, would just go, She's channeling like yeah. somebody else. Yeah. Like what? They. They. <laughs> they. They. That's where the original pronouns came from. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh my God. But um, what a what a movement. And you're just like wow. There's there's just no way. It, it, it what came out of her mouth. You're just there's no way. I know. There's it's no, brilliant. No way. It's that, brilliant. Yeah. It's incredible. And that you get the birth of law of attraction and just yeah. this, this whole fundamental. And yet when you backtrack the history, you know, law of attraction, I think being repackaged in the secret mm -hmm. um, was such, I mean, it's the same core values, mm -hmm. but like, you know, they, they just commercialized it. Yeah. You know, but if you really dig through, you're going to end up listening to those tapes. Mm -hmm. and you're going to end up listening to, to the, you know, all the stuff uh -huh. and be blown away. Yep. I like to get to the source of everything, uh -huh. you know, like transactional analysis, mm -hmm. Eric Burney, mm -hmm. applied psychology. Like mm -hmm. I, I like going to the source, getting the real material, mm -hmm. you know. So, yep. yeah. yeah. Well, I, I'm. I'm blown away at all the stuff that you're involved in. What, how do people find you now and get, in, get involved well, I'm easy in what to you're find. doing? <laughs> yeah? Someone told me a few years ago, there's 18 pages if you just Google my name. But I have oh. a, my website, robertradnody.com. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Um, I'm easy to find if you just know how to spell my name. Even if you don't, you just go to Pepperine and try to see who's the coach. I'm not the coach there any longer, but articles still pop up, so I'm easy to find. Wow. So, like... What do you do courses like four times a year? Like what? I, I, I do these transactions. So I just got back from Italy. I, I've, I've done this each summer. I've rented a yacht there in, in Croatia, in Greece. And I bring 36 friends out there. And uh, in the mornings, we teach a little bit um, mm -hmm. neuroscience. In the afternoon, evening, we go have fun, make it very experiential. So I'm doing that. Next year, I'm planning a, a, a year-long men's program. So my okay. plan is to each quarter get together um, individually or um, in person, mm -hmm. and then in between we'll get together weekly on, on Zoom. And I've got this new model, this mm -hmm. new model, four quadrant model, where I think that there, there, there's people that go to Tony Robbins and do life strategy kind of stuff, but I think you need to do more. And then there's people that do therapy kind of work, you know, inner child work, shadow work. I think you need to do that too. And then there's law of attraction, neuroscience. I think you need to do that too. Then there's spiritual work, you know, people, whether it's religion, Buddhism, meditation, contemplation. I'm into the gene keys right now. So I think that actually people need to work in all four quadrants if you want to actually make changes. Because like this came up because People, I, I, I know so many people in the spiritual world, and they still get triggered, and they still have stuff going on, and I think that they've just got a spiritual bypass. They miss certain things, and so I have this new theory that you need to be dabbling or, or investing in all four quadrants in my model, and that's what I'm going to be teaching next year in this men's group, a year-long program. That's fascinating, because I've just done that intuitively. Yeah, exactly. I, I've done it intuitively. Exactly. because Exactly. That you know, when one one's great, but then 
it leaves off and leaves out exactly some some life strategy exactly and tactics and just like tony i talked about tony yep like mindset and and even okay he says go mon go model yep there was a guy that i didn't have to go model after mm -hmm. he had already started 22 different mm -hmm. companies mm -hmm. and had already done the stuff mm -hmm. and he documented all of it yeah and he did so much from patenting to copyright and all that stuff that all the all the modeling that i need to do like literally he was probably 50 people in one yeah right yeah. um that was there so Tony left off with didn't have the rest of that, but he can't be all things to all people. There's not enough time. And he's just doesn't have the, the experience. I mean, his business experience, listening to his business experience has been a disaster as far as a businessman. Finally now figured it out. Yeah. Now. Like massively figured massively it out now. Figured it out. Helpful that, that, you know, with the online mm -hmm. version of Tony and getting connected yeah. and doing better deals and better partnerships. Yep. But some partnerships almost drove him into bankruptcy. Exactly. Like literally, he worked for free mm -hmm. all the like he's running around the world. Yep. And he comes back and he's broke and yep. his uh, person that he's counting on has just ripped him off. Yep. Or he signs a deal thinking it's somebody else, a billionaire, but no, it's the billionaire's kid that is yep. broke. Yeah. Right. And yep. Tony thinks he's like connected with the other person. Yeah. And he ends up personally guaranteeing something, and the kid doesn't have anything. Yeah. And Tony's responsible. Mm -hmm. and it's like you listen to all his mistakes, but they're real mistakes. And the fact that he admits them mm -hmm. is is phenomenal. Yeah. That he's not perfect. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I think that's helpful when you're making 600 million a year in top line revenue. Yeah. You know, it makes it easy to say, well, guess what? <laughs> guess what, folks? I made some mistakes. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, I'm sure he wasn't telling everybody about his mistakes when yeah. when they were happening, you know. Yeah, Keith Cunningham. I, he's, I Keith's mean, amazing. He's so funny. Keith's he calls so that good. the dumb tax. Yeah, the, yes. <laughs> the dumb tax. That was another dumb tax. <laughs> yeah, mine is uh, $43 million. Uh, I call them, you know, dumb tax and irresponsibility fees. Uh -huh. When you get hit with something that you just haven't been responsible for. Right. You know, like the, going through a toll booth and forgetting to look it up and pay it if yeah. you're in California yeah. and you get charged $22 instead of $2, mm -hmm. that's an irresponsibility fee, yeah. Yeah. right? A late payment on something yeah. or those are irresponsibility fees. Yeah. But dumb tax, I mean, my dumb tax was $43 million, but it's also reflects my overall net worth. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. It could easily have been four thousand three hundred. Yeah, I but, wish I had lost forty three million. That would have meant that I had forty three million. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't. You have to have it to yeah, lose it. You exactly. know. Exactly. So yeah, and it was even worse than that. I went, you know, twelve point eight million in debt. Right. On top of that, so right. Right. I guess even bigger. Yeah. I was able to dig a twelve point eight million dollar hole. Yeah. Um, before the banks figured out, like, oh, this guy's backwards. You know, just like uh, Donald Trump was mm -hmm. billions of dollars yeah. in debt. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. Well, these courses sound really cool. Yeah. And you you cover all four quadrants. I that's what I'm doing, and, okay. and I gotta tell you how this happened because I'm a chemical engineer. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching Tony Robbins. I'm teaching Joe Dispenza. You know, I'm teaching these things that are other people's, mm, okay. and I don't want that. I want to have some unique thoughts. I've been wanting to like. How come I can't come up with some new unique thoughts? The beginning of the year, I wake up at three thirty mm -hmm. in the morning. And all of a sudden, this model, I started getting channeled. Hmm. I don't know how to, I, from 3.30 to 6.30, I was texting myself what I'm hearing. Okay. This is the only time it's ever happened. Well, it happened with my love contagious too. But I finally got something, and it's, it's a really cool model. I, I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, it, 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 it just came to me. And this hmm. is what I'm teaching now, this four quadrant model. And I'm calling it Living Rad and Loving Contagiously. Wow, that's cool. And that's what I'm going to be teaching next year. That's awesome. And so uh, is Tony's work and Joe Dispenza's work integrated in this program? Yeah, it is. Okay, very cool. It is. See, what I... The, you know, people you ask know the me, tough thing is they got all their stuff from someone else. Exactly. So I see people that come in and they, they badmouth both of them, Yeah. right? And it's usually the people that are there. I'm like, why... Why would you show up, pay money to like? I, you keep saying I that I haven't heard very much of that at all. Well, you were leaders there. Yeah, well, but I still don't hear very much. I most of the people I know love both of them. 
There were, there were a big question to me that people ask me is, which one do you like better? And I go, I like them both. Okay, so you're telling me you went to a workshop, you didn't run into a person that wanted to be a life coach that said they could do what Tony does better and was like disappointed or didn't, said they could do Tony, but they weren't known. And then they have, you look and they have their own website. He's got time. Yeah. Wow. I, I probably did, but I don't remember that. I remember everyone just being so jazzed up. I was like blown away. At, see, I saw myself as like, um, at some point doing a lot of stuff that Tony's doing. Yeah, I've yeah. got 600,000 subscribers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm an influencer, all that kind of yeah. stuff. So I was looking at the amount of hate that people had in the room that had uh, people that had been there. And I'm like, honestly, I don't see that. It's there. I, I'm sure it's there, it's but there. maybe, maybe somehow my mind is blocked I just, it because I don't see it at all. You might've been pushing, you might've been pushing your conversation. I be. was listening. Yeah. I was listening to what people were saying and what they wanted to do, and I, I was just like, I, there was a large portion of people that were just so envious. No, I don't. And, I, and I'm like, the guy's been doing this for, for 40, 50 years. He built this traction over time with 12 people with a train going by. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, like, you know, like you, people want the, to be Tony today, and have the audience, mm -hmm. but they don't want to spend the time building it. Yeah, yeah. It's like I get a lot of people. How did you succeed in YouTube? I made mm -hmm. three thousand videos over uh -huh. seven years, uh -huh. right? One subscriber at a time. Like, I, I, I don't know. You know, like they mm -hmm. want the quick fix, go yeah. viral, and and be a success overnight. Right. And I'm right. like, Tony was is like a, a fifty year success overnight. Exactly. Elon Musk is a thirty year success overnight. Yeah. With well, almost went bankrupt two or three times. Right. You know, so like, yeah, and those that negativity I heard, I, I don't know how you didn't hear it. I heard enough I, I, of it really to where don't. it bothered me. I was yeah. like, why are you paying money to be here? Yeah. I like, I'm doing all his courses, and mm -hmm. like, and it just they wanted to be him, mm -hmm. and I, I guess they thought by bringing him down, it brought them up. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, is that not working or something? Just overheating. Good Lord. It's kind of warm in here. It is. It, yeah, it gets, we, that's why we try and turn up the air for as long as we can mm -hmm. to, to where it would get low enough to where it'd be cold so yeah, that yeah. when we're done, yeah. it's like decent temperature. Yeah. I don't know. These cameras, though, have been just acting up. Late. They should be able to go for hours. They're FX3s. They're, they're, you know, they don't have an overheating problem that they ever talked about. And they're supposed to be able to go for hours. These are movie cameras. These are Netflix approved. They're not cheap. Have you been in some movies that I would have known? Uh, what Dreams May Come, Bicentennial Man, Patch Adams. Patch uh, Adams? With, I did three movies with Robin Williams. I was oh. on Nash Bridges for three years. Oh. So nothing really notable. Just little line here, line there. Uh -huh. You know, I did, never got... Like, I did a movie with Clint Eastwood, True Crimes. Uh -huh. Had a little spot there, little couple of lines, and just got frustrated. Uh -huh. I was like, I'm not, not family with anybody, and in, unless I have some miracle breakout like Tom Cruise did uh -huh. in Taps. Yeah. Um, like, all the, bi I started reading everybody's biographies, uh -huh. and the rarity of a Will Smith or a Tom Cruise was like a needle in a haystack. Yeah, yeah. And the reality is, is that no one gets pulled up and there's almost like this, this thing that they don't want you to come up mm -hmm. unless you're in the group yeah, somehow, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. which, is, which is wild. One of my better athletes, um, he's, he, he's a Jim Carrey wannabe and he's trying so hard and you know, oh. he's just, he, he's now become sort of <laughs> famous, infamous. He goes on the uh, American, uh, um, America's got talent. Mm -hmm. He's now on Romania's got talent. Oh. Italy's got talent. And he's terrible. I mean, like, he gets, he gets booed mm -hmm. off the stage. He does these really stupid things. But it's, it's parlayed into wow. a bunch of, uh, of appearances. Wow. He's in Romania right now doing Romania's got talent. Wow. <laughs> Are you... Uh, yeah, we're still good. We're, still we're good now? Okay. So we, we probably want to wrap sure. so we don't keep... 
covering yeah, yeah. the last. I could talk to you forever. I know, <laughs> same, ditto. Um, I'm surprised about that. Like, I'm, I'm like, that's the only way, way I dug in was like, I, I'm surprised you haven't heard the, the negativity because it bothered me. Yeah, like, I, 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 I'm a positive person. Uh -huh. I don't, I don't like, I don't like negativity. Um, yeah, unless my I, whole channel, I, just, I don't do negativity. Unless I just missed it, I really missed it. Yeah, I'm like. I, you know, I, don't, I, get, I dove into what their dreams were and what they wanted, and then life coaching was it, and, and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, I think the people that really do well parlay the positive side of it and talk him up. And I've always, this, is, this has been my thought mm -hmm. about if you go learn from somebody, as soon as you start saying negative things about them, everything positive that you learn, you invalidate. For sure. And then, why would I pay $100,000 to go do something mm -hmm. or discount it to 88000 or whatever it was? Why would I do that and then go invalidate what I learned? Yeah. Well, you know, to the degree that I say Tony is magical, mm -hmm. to the degree that I think his material is transformative, mm -hmm. allows me to transform. Uh -huh. I'd see people at the, the last day that hadn't had a transformation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, he's like literally to the point of just like humiliating them yeah, with he just, does. He just does. like literally, you know, you and the whole audience, like except for the person, realizes how absurd it is mm -hmm. that you've gone a week without looking into who you are right. to find something that you could change for the better. Yep. A whole week. Yeah. 12 hours a day. <laughs> or more. <laughs> And there, there are these people at the end that literally, like, no transformation. Yeah. And I love the clock thing where you just like, oh, yeah. it, I don't know what, what day, what time exactly. It could be this time, could be that time, but it's something there. And you'll wake up. I, I think it's 8. 8.07. 8.07. Yeah, it could be 7.08. Yeah. You know, I'm not sure. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, it's, it, it's 8.07. Yep, 8.07. 8.07. You'll wake up. Yep. And uh, then he just goes to, like... And they so deserve it, I guess, at that point. And then people literally, during that process, will literally have a breakthrough, too. Yep. It took that level of intensity. Yeah. You know, and, you know, it's just, yeah. So I don't, if I learned something like Joe, I would never say anything bad about Joe. Mm -hmm. Because I've studied so much of Joe's stuff. Yeah. Like, why would I go against him? Yeah. It's just, yeah. I lose everything that I spent the time learning. Yeah. Because my brain's going to invalidate him, exactly. and then it's going to cancel anything he says. Exactly. I just, yeah, it's mind-boggling. That's why I'm saying it's like it was like literally, what are you doing? Why are you here? Like, mm -hmm. go step outside, get your mind right, come back. Mm -hmm. You know. So at any rate, so I'm glad you didn't hear any of that stuff. That's fabulous. Yeah. Um, I would rather have not have heard it. Yeah. Because I, it wasn't. I'm, I'm there putting a hundred percent in. Right. You know, I don't care about the fact that you envy a guy that spent. 50 years building what he's built, yeah. um, you know, and go do your thing. Yeah. Start with 12 people yeah. and then you'll get 13 if you're good yeah. and then 14 and maybe yeah. you'll fill a room of 15,000 people yeah. uh, that'll spend $5,000 or 10 or mm -hmm. 20 or $100,000 mm -hmm. to be, or 200 if you want to be a lion. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Not me. I don't need to be in the front row. I can, I'm fine. I love with, being in the front row. Well, I did too, but yeah. the Lions got the first yeah, dibs yeah. on that. Yeah, and yeah, that was the yeah, new thing. <laughs> that, that, yeah, it wasn't. That just got started right. when, when I was in like 2018. Yeah. And I think he'd even you, have you, a... You were planted 2018? Mm -hmm, yeah. Oh, so I did it 2017. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming oh, on. Yeah. I'll put all your stuff at the bottom uh, in the description. Sure. so that people can find you and your thing and that's yeah. exciting it was, um, it was just fun being here yeah yeah, yeah. i could feel like i talked to you forever yeah. <laughs> I, I love these topics these yeah. are my favorite topics it was fun. training which you know we've talked a little bit about training yeah. um personal development is my favorite i don't get to talk about it that much on yeah. the regular but channel you know, as far as training if you want to get faster mm -hmm. and i don't know that you do but if you do get yourself a running coach i want to get i want to feel good I would love to be faster, uh -huh. but not at the expense of not enjoying what I'm doing. Yeah. I'll, I'm, I'm, I should try it just to check you it out. You should just try it. I think but I'll try it just to check it out. Find someone that knows the different energy systems because mm -hmm. they're going to change your training from just going out and running, which that's what I did. You could, you could, it's fine. But yeah. if you, I think you might actually enjoy it 
and just see how it goes. Because like even my model, my model, I, I teach those things, but I say, this was just what I did. Don't do it this way. This is just an idea. I want you to open up your mind and whatever's going to come into your environment that turns you on, go that direction. Yeah, package it. Yeah. Your package. Yeah. So it's your content. Create your own custom program, just like a custom Date with Destiny poster. Yeah, totally. Well, thank you so much for oh, coming pleasure. on. Thanks, and I hope you'll be back. Where do you live? <laughs> I know I just eventually bought a house Santa, in Santa Barbara. Barbara. I got a place in Naples, okay. um, um, and, but I travel quite a bit. Which, so. Na which Naples? Florida. Oh, Naples, Florida. I love Florida. Yeah, That's so I'm cool. heading there tomorrow. Yeah, I just bought a house in, um, in Cathedral Hill in San Francisco, closed oh, okay. yesterday. Okay. So spend some, we do a lot of investing in tech companies. Okay. So yeah. we looked at 153 companies over the last couple of months, and yeah. we invested in two. Uh -huh. We looked at 10 last week. And, uh -huh. So we'll be spending about three days, two days to three days a week in San Francisco, yeah. and then the rest. And you here. and your wife? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's and then cool. um, we have a castle in Poland, fifty thousand square foot castle. Cool. We go to once a year, and then uh, we have a place that we we land in in uh, Dubai, and then we have a house in Napa that we're we're thinking about selling. Are you Polish? Um, my Prussia was where my mom's grandparents came from. Okay. That were I think. It was Prussia, so that's like in Poland yep. um, during the time of German, yeah. Russian, yeah. Polish, yeah. Jewish, yeah. Um, and then they came through Canada and kind yeah. of came into the country yeah. and, and just built an apartment complex up on the hill and were very, very savvy, but uh -huh. didn't really talk about yeah. what, what had happened. I'm sure when, you have, when you're from a country that doesn't exist anymore, like Prussia, mm -hmm. there's a lot of stories there yeah. I, I never yeah. really heard. They never, they never talked about yeah. what went down. Yeah. I'm sure it wasn't. So you weren't, I don't think you were here. My parents came from Hungary during the revolution of 56. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I recorded a bunch of stories for my mom and put them into a book that we're now making into a movie, it looks like. Because um, I, I just wanted my kids to know to know those stories. I wish I wish I knew the stories yeah. of my family. Yeah. I, I don't. And yeah. they, they seem I think I'm I think I've got I think I'm part Jewish, you know. Mm -hmm. Um and, and but that was never that mm -hmm. was never brought in yeah. and, and part Russian. Yeah. Yeah. That was never brought into the mix. Yeah. And even on my father's side they came in through uh, Oklahoma, I have a little bit of Indian, uh -huh. was on the Ka reservation in Oklahoma and yeah. kind of filtered out. But both both families didn't really talk anything about their their past, yeah. and that to me would have been rich, yeah. just rich stories to yeah. to imprint. But maybe it's good because I, I'm whoever I want to be in the moment. Exactly, I'm not attached to any of my family yeah. legacy stuff, so yeah. maybe it's a good thing. I yeah. don't know. Maybe. Well, thank you so much yeah. for coming on. It was Appreciate fun. It.